What's going on, smart people? Before we get into the video, I just want to say that two days from now is my 100th daily upload, and for it, I'm going to need you guys to fill the comments with questions. And I also made a Twitter just for that, never twatted before, but I made a Twitter in case you don't actually have a YouTube account, but you have a Twitter so that you can still ask questions. So yes, it is a Q&A. Sorry if that's not as interesting as you thought this would be, but hear me out. I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled this weekend. That means I'm on a huge time crunch with the videos that I'll be able to make throughout the rest of this week. And this is just going to be easier and it still technically is new for me to do. So because some of you did have other suggestions for what this video, this 100th video could be, I figured throughout the rest of next week when I have a bit more time on my hands, I can revisit some of those suggestions and maybe do some of those as well. That way it's not just me answering questions and like, yeah, big idea, big nice video idea, Andrew. No one's ever done that before. But basically, since I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled on the day of my 100th video, that just means I have to pre-record that as well as the following one. That way I don't have to talk while looking like a chipmunk and record that. So, hope you guys understand, but that means that this video, this video specifically, is the one that I want you to make comments on. Not tomorrow's video, but this one. And I'll be going through these comments and the ones that are posted on Twitter, and then I'll probably cut it off sometime tomorrow uh, when I record the video. So probably sometime tomorrow around 2-ish around is when you should stop posting questions because I'll already have started making the video. Moving on from that, I think you guys get the point by now. Today's video is very special. There's never been a more special video on YouTube than this one. No one's ever recorded a more important thing to talk about. I'm done with my code. What code am I talking about? For those of you who might be new, I have a research internship at Jefferson Lab and I'm effectively taking a Mathematica code, putting it up, making it more general, more user friendly, putting it in Python, and yeah, that's about it. What is the code actually doing? Well, at Jefferson Lab, you're colliding electrons with protons and neutrons, all that good stuff. These neutrons and protons are what you think of as they're made out of three quarks, right? Sort of but also not really because the binding energy the, uh, associated with the strong force holding this stuff together is enough to make particles be popping in and out of existence. So when you collide these particles together, did you really hit a quark though? These are the questions that you need to be asking yourselves. And you can split these collisions into a bunch of different regions, sort of. Uh, and basically what the code does is it takes in momentum fractions. You have all these particles moving in and moving out. What particles are carrying what fraction of the total momentum? Based off of that, you can calculate these things, these region ratios, which sort of tell you what approximations are okay to be made and lead to certain things called factorization, different fra factorizations. Now, I don't quite understand factorization, but I know that it's associated with what you can do to certain structure functions, which are written in terms of, or sometimes written in terms of the hadronic tensor, which I've shown you in a previous video. So it's all coming together. I hope you guys understood every single bit of that. Anyways, moving on to less technical side of things, what this means, what this whole thing being done means is I was supposed to finish at the beginning of August, which means I finished about almost a month and a half early. And that means that I can move on from doing purely computational stuff that is just me being helpful to actually applying it to physics so I can start to do physics again. So as soon as I finish the code, I let my supervisor know, and he sent me a couple papers where I can start playing with actual experimental values of these certain momentum fractions and things like that. And then we're going to meet, I guess, maybe tomorrow? If not tomorrow, then next week, and we're going to start talking about physics again. I gotta be honest, it, it does feel really cool having this done so early because for my first internship, I had a research internship at Jefferson Lab before, and I had absolutely zero confidence with anything that I was doing. I still did everything in Python, but I didn't know Python at the time. And the amount of confidence I had then versus how much I have now is just like night and day. Now I feel completely competent and capable with what I'm doing, and sort of like the go-to person to go to, go-to person, did I really just say that? But yeah, I, I feel like the go-to person for, for Python-related things as far as this internship goes. So today was a good day, and I'm really glad that I took this internship because now, it, more than ever, it's starting to really seem like I could do this stuff professionally in grad school, or pursue it in grad school, rather. So nuclear theory might actually be in my future. Coming for you, nucleuses. But that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to comment every question you've ever had about anything in the comments section or in Twitter. I'll leave a link to that in the description. I don't think anyone's ever posted on it yet because I made it very recently. So be sure to do that. See you guys there. Okay, bye.